Let's take a look at memory. Main memory is made up of a series of small consecutive memory locations that look like this. So every little rectangle is representing one memory location, and all of them put together are sort of representing our entire main memory, our entire RAM. Each memory location has a unique number called an address associated with it. The address is exactly what it sounds like. It gives us a way to name and represent the memory location so that the CPU can find it. This is very analogous to the type of address you're familiar with, the address of your house. In this case, the memory location is the house itself, and the address is, well, the address that tells people exactly where you live. The address of a memory location is used to read the value stored in that location, or to write a new value into it. I previously made the analogy that a memory location is sort of like your house, and your memory address is just like the address of your house. Well. The data or the information or the values that are going inside of this memory location, well, that's just like all the stuff inside of your house. It's just all the things that are being stored in there. We mentioned that main memory is also called RAM, or random access memory. That's because a CPU doesn't have to read or write memory locations sequentially, they can be accessed in any arbitrary order, hence the name random access. So here in this diagram, I could get the data from location 4803, and then I could jump to 4811, and maybe go back to 4807, and then jump to 4804, and maybe jump to 4812, and so on. All the memory locations in RAM are equal when it comes to how quickly we can access them. This random access is contrary to sequential access. Magnetic hard drives have sequential access, which basically means that they have to go in order when they're trying to access addresses. If I was at 4803 and I wanted to go to 4810, I'd have to go in order, so 4804, 4805, 06, one at a time in order until I finally got to 4810. When we store or write some data into a memory location, it overwrites and basically destroys any information that was previously being stored there. Essentially, two pieces of data can't be stored at the same address. They each need their own. When we're reading data, though, it doesn't do anything to the memory location since you're just getting the value of the data. Nothing will change. Each memory location consists of one byte of information. That's the same byte that we're talking about when we say your phone has 64 gigabytes of storage or your computer has 8 gigabytes of RAM. One byte makes up one memory location, so we can say that each byte has an address. If the value we're trying to store requires more than one byte to be stored, which happens frequently, we need to use multiple consecutive bytes to store that data. So if I had a data value that I wanted to store, but it needed four bytes of memory, it'd take up four consecutive memory locations, just like this. One last thing about RAM, which I briefly mentioned earlier, is that it gets completely cleared out when the computer is turned off. Main memory is volatile, meaning that its information will be lost when the electric power supply is gone. That's another reason why we need secondary memory storage like hard drives and USB flash drives so we can keep our information permanently so our CPU and RAM can access it when it's needed. One small detail I should point out is that there's also another type of computer memory. This small part of memory is permanent and non-erasable, and it's called ROM, or read-only memory. ROM contains the initialization code that boots up your operating system, so when you turn on your computer, ROM is basically giving RAM the first program it needs to work. It gives it the operating system. Once the operating system is ready to go, you can use your computer just like normal. Whereas RAM is read and write, meaning we can read values and write new values into memory, ROM is read only, since it's used just to boot up the operating system. We're not changing anything. So now we've covered how the CPU and main memory work in our computer systems. This is the core of our computer. Peripherals refer to anything other than the CPU and main memory, so things like input and output devices and secondary storage. All of these components are the hardware of our computer systems. Next, we'll take a look at software and how programs make our hardware come to life.